you made it to level two, deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and then awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Hello and welcome to Decide to Transform and a special co-hosted edition of the show with my co-host, Lisa Berry. We have a very special guest joining us today. Lisa Artuzo is joining us and she is a fun, dynamic, powerhouse leader. And I'll introduce her to you in just a moment, but this will be a fun and high energy show. So I hope you're ready to have a high energy experience. So let me introduce both Lisa's here. I have Lisa B and Lisa A on the show today, which is new for me. So I'm enjoying that. But Lisa Berry, my co-host, is a longtime internet radio show host. She has been the host of Light on Living on Ohm Times Radio and co-hosts along with GP Walsh, The Flow of Enlightenment and Access to Angels and Grace. Both of those shows are on Ohm Times Radio. Lisa is also a very good friend of mine and my business partner in Podcast Prosperity. We are podcast producers and trainers. This is a lot of fun and we enjoy co-hosting together. So Lisa, welcome. I'm glad to co-host with you again. So happy to be here. Yay. <laughs> And this is fun because our guest, Lisa Artuzo, is a mindset coach and owner of an online social commerce skincare business, also the mom of a teen boy and a wife. Now, Lisa's vision is to help people become the optimum version of themselves. This is possible through her sessions. And as a mindset coach, she trains your mind to attract what you desire in your life. She has coached hundreds of women and men over the years and has also spoken in schools and corporations on topics as diverse as anti-bullying, leadership, sales, and mindset skills. She's passionate about coaching people to feel confident, not only on the inside, but the outside as well. Her online skincare business is the vehicle that helps people feel beautiful naturally. She's a strong believer in giving people the tools to grow as a person. And through her coaching sessions, you'll have a higher understanding of your purpose. Now, this part interests both of us. Lisa also has a podcast called Happiness is a Habit. In this podcast, we dive into techniques to find the authentic joy within you. Now, Lisa struggled to find happiness in her life for years, so she did a lot of research to find systems that work. Now, after 25 years of learning, Lisa is finally living her purpose and sharing her wisdom with others, and she is our guest today, Lisa Artuzo. Lisa, welcome to Decide to Transform. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. That was an amazing introduction. <laughs> awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> We're excited to have you. <laughs> oh, Lisa, I would have loved, you know, it's so interesting as we were hearing about you and learning about you, because you're new to both of us. We love meeting new people. Is, um, Me too. <laughs> how you said, uh, it was written about you, that you love helping people find or become their optimum version of themselves. And what I loved about that was when we first hopped on a call last week, you said, like right out of your mouth was, I require leaders in my life. And I remember like, what a bold statement. Oh my gosh. I love that. And I love that you were saying, it's not like I'm a leader because you are too, but that you require leaders so that, um, I would, my question is that when, when somebody is looking at their optimum version of themselves, it, it's not always in the leadership role. They may require them. What is your optimum version of balancing being a leader and requiring leaders? Right. So I feel so strongly and yes, it's a bold statement. <laughs> we need leaders. We need someone to look up to because if you're around people that are constantly kind of pulling on you and pulling on your energy and pulling you down, you're like, ah, I need to go up and pull from up. Right. So I think that's really important. So balancing being an entrepreneur and balancing being around those people is honestly, um, 
like it could be whatever percentage you want it to be, but the more you're around people that are leaders that you aspire to be like, the more likely you'll become like those people and you'll become the optimum version of you because you are obviously attracted to some of the qualities that they have as a human being and you want to learn from them. And you want to know how they got to that point, if it's financially or if it's just their character. Sometimes you're just attracted to someone's characteristics and you're like, oh, I just want to be, you know, more positive or I want to be this way or I want to earn more money or whatever it is you want more of. Um, Go for it and look for it in those people. And if you don't have them around you, listen to podcasts or listen to things um, that will give you that information. I love that. Oh, Tomas, can I squeeze one more end on this one? This is so good. Yes, of course. Lisa, thank you for just giving that tool because, you know, there was a time in my life where I didn't have those people around me in my, in my life, in my world. And I, I found the internet and started listening to podcasts. So thank you for reminding people right now, because they might go, yeah, I don't have leaders in my life, but you're right. We can, we can tune in and listen to them just like we're doing now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. We all three agree. Listen to podcasts. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Honestly, you need to, you need to go out there and find what you need. When I was in my twenties, I struggled with mindset. I struggled with negative thinking. I grew up in like certain cultures. Um, they, they're just more judgmental or maybe not as grateful, or you just grow up in an environment where you're like, Oh my gosh, there's so much negativity around me. I can't even, you know, I had a great upbringing, great parents, but again, there's always situations or people or friends that drag you down and you're like, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this mindset? Because what you're around is what you become. So being very cognitive of that and being very aware of that, I think is really important. Yeah, uh, it really is. And, you know, you mentioned in your intro and just now that you struggled with your mindset and you you answered one of my questions a little bit about your upbringing. Um, Some people don't have a a very helpful, supportive upbringing. What caused you, do you think, to struggle with your mindset as a young woman? I think for me, it was more self-confidence, self-esteem. I was a very shy girl growing up um, and I'm polar opposite right now. (laughs) Like you'd never (laughs) know I was shy. (laughs) I would always, you know, watch people like in high school, we had this uh, speaker come in and I was so inspired and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'd love to be on stage one day to be an inspirational speaker. Mm -hmm. And this was me in high school. And I'm like, I don't know how I could ever do that. I'm so shy. And I was just so withdrawn within myself and, you know, got bullied in high school and just wasn't one of the cool kids. (laughs) So I just kind of just stayed to myself. And then I, I realized, I guess, over the years, the potential that I had in me and the fact that people liked to be around me in my 20s and my 30s. And a lot of people would say to me, you know what? thanks for the coaching. Like, and I just wasn't even, I wasn't intentionally trying to, I was just giving advice or just guiding someone or helping someone. And I'm like, wow, you can actually make money from this. Mm. (laughs) So I just kind of went in that direction and, um, became a life coach through the whole thing. This was like, I became a life coach more in my late thirties. I wanted to do it in my twenties, but I didn't have the life experience. Um, and I went through a lot of ups and downs in life. Like everybody does right through divorce, you know, through being a single, single mom through losing two jobs, you know, all the things that people go through in life and, you know, sickness and families and deaths and all those things. Um, We all go through those ups and downs, but I think that's what, you know, helps us to find who we are and define who we are and, and what our purpose is too. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. And there's so many people out there that have had a similar experience, a divorce, um, you know, but both Lisa and I have have been through that. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I went through a divorce with two children. Um, So, you know, there's so much of that, that that, uh, people experience. And and you described something that seemed like it was uh, a bit of a surprise to you that you could make money as, as um, helping somebody work through their own difficulties. So, you know, at what point were you aware that people were routinely coming to you with this type of situation where 
you were the safe space for them to work through it. Mm -hmm. I think I, I felt it in my late twenties into my thirties. And then I just, I just didn't do anything about it really, because I, again, the self-confidence, um, in me kind of held like my low self-confidence held me back. Mm. And also the fact that I didn't believe that I had enough to offer, but Uh in the end our right, our life experiences Mm. really can help someone else. Like our testimony, our life testimony can help someone else to get through something because that's the reason why we go through trials. They're tests for us um, to go through so that we can go and help someone else after we've been through that trial. So that's why we have trials in life. Mm. And, and then I realized when I was probably, I guess when I had my skincare business, um, more than anything, there was many, many women, um, coming to me and saying, you know, I have this issue, I have that issue. And then I, I found myself coaching a lot more than talking about how to make a sale (laughs) Mm, and then making people feel or helping them to become the best version of themselves. Actually, what comes out of that is performance. People will perform in, in sales or whatever they're doing because they feel better about themselves. They feel more confident. They feel capable. They feel empowered. Mm -hmm. And that's what changes people's lives is empowering them to realize the potential that they have within to become the optimum version of who they are. And that doesn't look anything like it would look like for me, it looks like it's, it's their version. Everybody has their Mm -hmm. own specific version because we are created as individuals and we all have gifts and talents to offer the world, right? We all think we have to be like that other leader. Oh, I need to be like that person to be successful. No, you need to be you just be you. And that is good enough. And I think I've realized that over the last, I would say over the last 10 years is I just became me who I always was. And that was enough. I love that. Oh my gosh. That was right right now. I was like, Oh, I want to pause on so many of those amazing. (laughs) I, first of all, I, I become a leader in what you're gifted in. Uh, That was one thing we, we had talked about, but, um, that is so important. And you just totally highlighted it because you were just you and love that you use the word performance in there because a lot of people think that, well, I'm just being me and thing, but out of, you know, the action that comes out of it and, um, something that's super, super on my mind about this and it's right in here is when someone feels valued, they become a leader. And you just spoke about, they talked about confidence. You talked about life skills. You talked about experience. Um, and then just being me, I would love if you could share what, when you said you had low self-confidence before, but now you started just being this. So there's a valuing. Was there a significant event or person who helped you to see that value? Or did you just finally go, no, I'm valuable today. And then I'm a leader. So what was that, that event for you? I would have to say, and the first thing that came to my mind when you said that was I used to work for Walmart's head office in their marketing department. And I remember having this boss, um, his name was Lou. And um, I remember him saying one time, I believe in you, Lisa. And those words are so powerful. It changed everything. So I had to present in front of 500 people in the head office. And um, I was like freaking out because I was that shy 20 year old or whatever. I was like 23, 24. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? I'm going to (laughs) die. Like I cannot go and present. You're not going to make me do this. I can't do it. I can't do it. And he just had to say, I believe in you, Lisa, you can do this. And it was him that pushed me over the edge to fly. And when I came back from presenting and I went into his office and I said, oh my gosh, I want to do that again. (laughs) I was like, so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, it just took someone believing in me and pushing me over the edge of, you know, to fly. Like, you know, when birds get kind of like pushed over and so that they can go fly on their own. The mama does that. The mama bird's like, okay, it's time to like flee the coop. Um, that's exactly it. So he did that for me. And then from that point on in my twenties, I started really succeeding in, um, in corporate, in the corporate world. Um, and then went on to work for actually the Olsen twins, Mary Kate and Ashley have represented their brand for a few years and worked for Nike and great corporations. And I was doing great in corporate, but I always knew 
knew that I knew that I knew that I was an entrepreneur. I knew that I was a performance-based person and I did not belong in corporate um, because I was, I was put in a box and my character and any entrepreneur can't be put in a box. So if that's you, you, you need to go and find something and do something on your own. It took me, me losing a job and being a single mom with like, literally I was sitting in my condo, just sitting there saying, what am I going to do with myself? I have like an 18 month old. I have no job. I need to do something. And it took me getting flatlined down to where I had to go down to my knees and only look up. And that's where I decided to build my mindset coaching business. And it didn't necessarily start at that time. I was doing a lot of volunteer work. (laughs) Um, I was doing things for free a lot. And then throughout the years, I started my skincare company and then the mindset coaching um, more recently has really taken off and then podcast within this last year that I started. So you don't, you don't think, you know, you have a goal, but don't think it's going to happen all in the one year. It could happen over 10 years. So Mm -hmm. that's like a 10 year journey, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and you mentioned being flatlined, um, being at kind of a bottom moment for you. What helped you when you were in that moment? Take us back to what helped you start the journey. Yeah. What was it? Was there a particular thing or person that helped? Um, I would just say I, I knew that I knew that I knew, like I knew that I needed to do something for me. And I feel like it was a sign (laughs) me losing my job. This was like a second job loss layoff. And, um, I, I remember, I remember losing my job and I was just super, super frustrated. Right. And then I just was like, I have to do something. I need to do something. And that was it. I can really feel, you know, when you said, I knew that I knew that I knew. And I, right when you're saying that, all I kept hearing was like, listen, we have to listen to ourselves. Listen, when you are uncomfortable in a job and you know, like what you said, it doesn't match your character. Um, it doesn't allow you to shine or, you know, and, and you also knew that you knew that you knew back in high school, when you saw that part, this inspirational speaker on stage, that you wanted to be in there, but you also knew that something was holding you back and you needed to work through that. And whether it was, you know, was his name, Mr. Lou here, who, you know, said, I believe in you or, and you believing. So you have to, we have to listen sometimes to what leaders, there are leaders all around us. And when they say something to us, we feel it. And then we hear that. Um, And so that takes me to, uh, um, when I, when I listen to myself, you know, actually take that moment and say, all right, something's not working or I want more, or I want a lead or I need, I need a leader. Um, What usually comes to mind is that there's a system that I'm not either implementing or it's not working and it's not producing results. I'm dying to ask you about systems that work and what I mean by that work that produce results. Cause you talked about volunteering and doing things for free. What, what makes you, what helps you to get into the leadership role of inventing, welcoming, or following systems that produce results? I think um, systems can be different in every, you know, every business that you start or whatever you're doing, or if you're working for corporate, it could be different. Um, Like for me, it's, it's a, there's a mindset system, right? So I Ah. think that, Mm -hmm. um, I think that gratitude is number one. And that's a system I use every day. So, um, like in regards to systems that you can do like databases and all those things, um, yes, you can do all of those like practical things, but what if you just had mindset systems where you're like, no matter how hard it's going to get, I'm going to be grateful in whatever situation I'm in, or I'm going to always think about the optimistic side of things. Even if I didn't get that sale, or if I didn't, uh, you know, move myself forward that day, or if I had a tough day, right. Just have your tough day, cry, wash your face and move forward. Right. So honestly, it's, it's mindset over the practical things. I think that if you can conquer what's going on in between your two ears, you can really just do whatever you need to do in your life. Okay. Right back to listening. I love that. Hmm. Uh, do you have something called the mindset system? Because right now I can like see the mindset <laughs> system by Lisa A. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We've both written that down. Yeah. There you go. yeah, I love it. <laughs> yes, the mindset system. 
With I, this, I'm uh, coining that one there. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. coin it. Yes, coin it. That's why Tomas and I love that when people coin <laughs> things because you know what yeah. it's passionate. And right now you heard what you were like, we all just like, it just was shiny. And I was like, woohoo. All right. So then that, and that fuels you. And so uh, Tomas, I'm now I'm questioning Tomas. This is funny. Um, totally, this, this is perfectly okay. We can all question <laughs> each other here. You were so drawn to the mindset coach. What, what was the one as we're going to, we're going to use you, Lisa. What was your one question Tomas that kind of came to your mind that you thought, wow, if I could ask a mindset coach, this one thing, what would it be? <laughs> uh, well, actually, there's more than one question. So happily, we have time for this, right? Yes, right. Uh, the first thing, we're our, we already started talking about it, and that is what works for you. So as, as a mindset coach, I mean, you mentioned viewing things from the optimistic perspective, from the optimistic side and a gratitude practice. So what else, uh, Lisa, would you like to add to that? What else are you doing systematically that helps? Okay, this is really important and everybody needs to listen to this. Yes, listen. <laughs> because if you, yeah, if you want magic to happen, your routine in the morning needs to be on par. You need yeah. to wake up at a certain time. You need to properly drink like a glass of water and try not to drink coffee. I've stopped coffee. I know that's hard. I'm drinking matcha tea. <laughs> I, I go, I, yeah, it's really good. And it still has caffeine and it gives you an even amount of energy throughout the day. It doesn't give you a dip like coffee does. Okay. And it's good for your adrenal glands. So health is very, very, very important eating the right things. And you know, all of that, you know, walking, whatever you do for physical activity, I go for a walk every morning with my dog. I listen to a devotion or I'll listen to a podcast or whatever it is on my walk, that system that I have is working for me. And I've, I've read books on that, how magic happens in your morning. So if you're not starting your day off properly, you will have anxiety throughout the day because you'll be trying to keep up with everything coming at you throughout the day. But if you do everything yeah. you need to do in the morning, set yourself up for success, set your intention for the day, your day will flow way differently. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a, a main system that I use for success that changes my mindset throughout the day. Yes. Yeah. I, I love that. And uh, my second question for a professional mindset coach, what have been your biggest mindset challenges? You know, what, what are they still? What comes up for you? How do you work with it? mindset challenges. Okay. So I'll, I'll share <laughs> last week, actually I struggled. And I think I was telling Lisa this when we were talking, mm -hmm. I was struggling with, you know, being inside, I'm a people person we're in, you know, the lockdown. Um, yeah. so it's a struggle and it creates like this thought pattern where you start feeling anxious and you start overanalyzing, overthinking and, and you become consumed by your thoughts. So that has happened to me. And okay. in the end, I have to take my thoughts captive. Like I literally grab my thoughts. Like I feel like I take them in my hand and I'm like, you don't belong here. And I literally replace them with good thoughts. If I'm like struggling with something, I'll fill my head. And it's, I always go back to podcasts or music um, or something that's going to fill my head with something that is against what I'm thinking. Cause negative thought patterns can be changed with cognitive reprogramming. You're, you're cognitively reprogramming your mind to think differently. And this takes years of practice. This doesn't happen overnight where you're like, oh, okay, I'm just going to think differently. Like in a day, it takes time over time, you changing your thought patterns and that's life-changing for people. Mm -hmm. Like I've been working on this for 25 years. So again, like people can change, um, certain things that they're struggling with. If they have blocks, mindset blocks or whatever, we can work through that with someone. Cause it's usually fears that people need to overcome, or there's just a block and they can't understand why they feel so stuck. Like, have you guys all felt stuck at some point where you're like, I can't move forward. Uh, there's something yes. blocked blocking me. Right. And it's in your mind. It's something in your mind that's blocking you. It could be an emotion of whatever, a, a trauma that happened to you. And you, it keeps on replaying in your mind. You could feel guilty or you have offense in you or whatever, whatever it is, someone's hurt you and you, you've never gotten over it. Um, there's so many different things that can hold you back as a human being and in your career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. First of all, I love that. Um, 
Ah, leader in transformation can take time. I like that. Um, meaning the transform, like, yes, say somebody doesn't have a morning routine or they have all those negative thoughts. Yeah. I love that. I love that visual of grabbing your thought from your, you know, from your head into your hand and going, all right, you, what's the opposite of yeah. you what I need and kind of like blah, blah, plopping it all back in. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I have a fun question. That's fun, fun for me. One of my mindset challenges, um, and maybe you've experienced this, maybe Tomas you have, is that I'll have start, be, be, begun, began, begun a relationship with somebody and like you, I might volunteer or do free things. And then my mindset says, oh, you can't charge them now. You've already been doing that for free. You, you've already offered it. You're a bad person if you now want to start charging or if say somebody else already has their business out there and they want to increase their price. Hmm. So I, I know I kind of went on business level there, but um, hmm. as a leader, you know, this I mean, mindset, how do we need permission? Is that what we do? Give ourselves permission to rewrite a relationship or um, a contract in our mind? Or what would you, what would your advice be? Honestly, I think it boils down to worthiness about yourself, right? So knowing your value, knowing your worth and knowing that you have enough in you that it's worth you know, the $300 an hour, whatever you're charging or $200 or $50 an hour, whatever it is. Um, and that you have enough to offer that person and that you can make a difference in their life and you're, you're of added value to that person. So really the dollar amount to that person, you know, in the end is, is, is irrelevant because they're, they're, they're getting what they need from you. Like I've, I've had coaching clients say to me, you know, like, every time, well, there's a a mom that I'm coaching the son of this lady. And, um, the mom says to me every time he goes on the phone with me that he lights up and she goes, it's changed his life drastically talking to you. He's lit up. Um, I, I also coach a 13 year old and the mom says, every time she talks to you, she's like transformed. She comes off the phone and her energy is so much better than what it was going in. Um, so that's, really important, um, to, to note, right? Like you just need to know who you are and your value and that you are valuable to someone out there because what you have to offer is a gift and you've been given it to use, not to keep back for yourself. Right. So it's us kind of just getting self-absorbed in our own head and overthinking it all. And I know I've gotten trapped into that too, where you're like, Oh, I could just do it for free but we are entrepreneurs. We are business people. This is what we do. Right. And this is our living. We have to pay the bills. We're taking care of our family. Um, our families are the priority. Right. And, and we are doing this to change people's lives. So I actually love that you mentioned two teenagers, because I love that you brought that you included everybody. It wasn't just entrepreneurs. It wasn't just like a, a grown woman or man who needs to know you actually literally said you're helping 13 year olds recognize yeah. their value. So if they can be eight years old and be valuable, they can be 13, you know, so thank you for, for sharing that. I love that. Check. In yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And teenagers especially need it right now because teenagers are, you know, they're working from home now they're doing online schooling. They're alone. Uh, they're not having their friends around them. They need a lot more encouragement than we can even ever imagine. Oh, yeah. So pay attention to your teenagers. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Uh, Lisa, how old, how old is your teenager? Uh, he's 13, actually. 13, oh, yeah. all right. 13 year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. And, and if you're listening out there and you have teenagers, definitely pay attention to them because online school is not the same schedule as regular school. So there's no a lot kidding. more free time, a lot more free time no to get into trouble. With. So teenagers <laughs> listening, do exactly what your parents say. At totally all times. do exactly <laughs> what they say right at all times <laughs> yes. yes and stop yes. eating me at a house and hold oh my gosh yes. these teenagers eat too much <laughs> yes or you can foot the grocery bill on your own yes yeah exactly Thank you. signed parents <laughs> everywhere yeah <laughs> I love it. 
Yeah, it's, it's so some, funny. you know, and this speaks to some of the challenges that are going on right now. And for those of you that might be listening several years from now, we're recording this at the start of 2021 during another wave of the coronavirus pandemic. People are on lockdown everywhere. Well, we're not here in Arizona and the spike in new cases proves that we're not, but hey, bars and restaurants are open. So you know, with all of these challenges, um, Lisa, what's the one thing that most jumps out at, at, to you as a mindset coach and as a leader that people need right now? Honestly, people need to be heard. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing about coaching is I listen a lot. Um, they yeah. need to be heard because there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of people struggling with anxiety, depression, all of the, all of the stuff. <laughs> and they just really need, just need to be heard. They need to feel loved. They need to feel appreciated. They need to feel valued. Um, and that's why, honestly, my mindset business Co like the coaching business is growing yeah. um, and it's growing so drastically right now more than ever. You know, my online skincare business is definitely growing too, because of the fact that people want to feel great because they're indoors. And they're like, I need to feel pretty, <laughs> but uh, yeah. the coaching part on the inside is more important than the outside right now. So that's um, I think that that's what people need. It's, mm -hmm. it's required. And I never really yeah. would have thought, but it's growing. It's amazing. Yeah. Your um your podcast because this is really neat um health happiness is a health healthy happiness oh what is it is happiness that? is a habit yes, yes. <laughs> happiness is a habit um yeah. when when I love that you said that people need to be heard that's what you're saying so um on your podcast that do you is it you just sharing with people or do you have guests come on and then interview them like are we getting happiness habit tips. Yes. So happiness is a habit basically is a podcast that I started and I've been doing them right now with tips. So there's tips and tricks on there. You'll go on there and you'll find out some tricks and, and tips to make your life easier and find authentic happiness. Um, my goal in this year is actually to have some, go, uh, some guests come on and to share, you know, what they've learned throughout their life and what has worked for them so that I can hear some new things and we can all learn from each other. I love it. I love this. Yeah, this is this is really so much fun. And as we've said several yeah. times on this show, listen to podcasts. Lisa, what do you most enjoy about podcasting? I love pod podcasting because it actually allows me to be myself, authentically myself, and have yeah. fun and really just share my heart with people. Mm -hmm. I just feel like there's a need right now for what like happiness, right? People are struggling with why would I be happy? Like there's so many things going on in the world. Um, I'm struggling with even just getting through the day. Like my kids are making me crazy. I'm homeschooling. I'm working. I'm a chef. I'm a cleaner. I'm everything, every hat, or even with, with men, if they're, you know, staying home with their kids and, or if the whole family's at home and they're driving each, each other crazy. Yeah. So how do you find, you know, happiness through a time where we're going through like a crazy time in the world? Um, well, it's just listening to things and learning things. And that's how I did it. I listened and I learned and I kept on learning. And now I want to share what I've learned. I love it. Okay. Yes. And where can people find and listen to this show? Well, anywhere, um, anywhere that you can listen to a podcast, Spotify, if you have it, like it's yeah. wherever you can find a podcast. It's called okay. Happiness is a Habit by Lisa Artuzo. Okay. Excellent. So <laughs> I feel as like we we can coin her as the sorry is the the leader in listening <laughs> yes. the listening leader <laughs> yes the leader in listening so if you're going to lead in something that is a valuable valuable thing to lead in yes yes exactly and you know what i think that having a servant leadership heart so serving people and leading that way is the best way to lead so being a servant leader is the optimum way to lead. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you're, we're here to serve, right? We're here to empower. It's not about me. It's about them. Mm -hmm. So if it's always about you, then 
that's not fun, right? So people want to feel, to feel valued. So we make it about them. I make the podcast about them, about what they need, not what I need, right? Or mm-hmm. about me at all, right? So that's how we serve as, as leaders. We serve our, our, the public, the people that are listeners, whoever it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, most definitely. And it's, um, how, so how, um, how does it feel for you? I mean, describe your feeling when you sit down to the mic and, and deliver a podcast or you interview a guest. I mean, how does that feel for you to step into the servant leader's role? Um, it, it feels amazing. It feels empowering. It feels like I'm living out my purpose. It feels just not even like it's a job. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's like a passion really Mm -hmm. in the end, you know? And I just love the fact that, you know, you'll get a message, you know, a day later and someone will be like, oh my gosh, that was life-changing. And that just totally changed my perspective on how I'm living my life. Mm -hmm. And that's rewarding. The the rewarding part is seeing how you're affecting people and changing people's lives through podcasting. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And with your mindset coaching business, you've mentioned that during this pandemic, it has surged, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, if people were to want to seek you out and get more information about either your podcast or mindset coaching, your skincare business, anything that you offer, how would people best get a hold of you? Well, um, either through Facebook or Instagram on Facebook, it's Lisa Artuzo, um, on Instagram, it's Lisa Artuzo life coach. And then, or I could be emailed artuzo.lisa at gmail.com or my podcast. Happiness is a habit. Okay. So yes, let's, let's repeat that. So Facebook, Lisa Artuzo, A-R-T-U-S-O and Lisa Artuzo life coach is your handle on Instagram. Yes, artuzo.lisa at gmail.com and the podcast once again, because we all say, listen to podcasts. Yes, happiness is a habit. Yeah, (laughs) and it's true. Yes, amen. Because if it's not a habit, then it's it's not going to continue, right? So happiness is not just a feeling, it's an action. You have to take action to be happy and do the things to make you happy. Because you only know what you need to be happy. No one else can make you happy. I have to say that I happiness as an action. So I just, sorry, I love, I just kind of worded that Mm. way. That was great because Yes, it's that feeling thing, but yes, if if you don't do it as a habit, it's just not going to happen every day. I had to highlight that. That was so much fun. Okay. Yes. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yeah, and it really is worth repeating because there are people out there listening maybe right now that haven't drawn that link in their mind that this is about something that you decide to do and you commit to doing. It is in fact an action. Yeah. It most definitely is. So I really am happy that you highlighted that. So For Lisa, sure. this has been a lot of fun here and yes, I've learned totally. a great deal. Yeah. And, and, you know, we keep repeating that people need to listen to podcasts. So um, I, I completely agree with that. So Lisa, what else would you like to add before we wrap up today? Anything else for the listeners out there? Honestly, if you are desiring something in your heart and it's truly been on your mind for a very long time to either create your own podcast or to start your own business or whatever it is, 2021 is the year that you need to step in to what your destiny is and go and do it anyways. Don't let your mind stop you from doing the things that you're destined to do. And, and that will bring you so much fulfillment. So go out there and get it guys, go get it. I love it. Okay. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Well, Lisa B, thank, thank you very you. much for co-hosting. Lisa A, thank you for joining us today. I'm loving it. Thank you. So fun. I can't wait to do it again. You'll be on my show next. I love it. All right. And we will be there. Happiness is yeah. a habit. This has been Decide to Transform with Lisa Artuzo and a lot of fun, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Everyone have a great rest of your day.